Hey calculus class, today we are going to learn topic 27, optimization. So optimization problems are problems that you want to optimize given certain conditions. Examples of these include maximum perimeter area or volume, minimum amount of product that needs to be used, a minimum profit, a minimum distance, and of course there's many more. So how do we optimize problems? So we're gonna use this example, um, which is a rectangular sheet of metal, 20 inches by 30 inches, will have small squares cut out of each corner and then discarded. The four sides are then folded up and the seams welded so as to form a lidless rectangular pan for cooking brownies. What size squares should be cut out of each corner so as to maximize the volume of the brownie pan? And what is the maximum volume? So the first thing, step one, is to always read the problem and draw and label a picture. So here is my brownie pan with the size cut out, and I'm gonna label certain things. So it's a 20 by 30. And I'm going to list what you want to optimize and write a formula for a quantity to be optimized. This is called the primary equation. So I want to find the maximum volume and the value of x. And I want a primary, my primary equation will be the volume of the pan, which is rectangular. So the volume is equal to length times width times height. Now I'm going to write a secondary equation so that you can rewrite the primary equation in one variable, because currently it's length, width, and height. So I want to rewrite everything so it's in terms of x. So I am letting x represent the um, length and width of the square that's being cut out. So then that means that this distance right here is going to be 20 minus 2x because there's an x on this side and an x on this side that was cut out. Then on this side of the rectangle, that's going to be represented by 30 minus 2x because you have an x here and an x here that has been cut out. So that means my height when I fold it up is going to be x, the length is going to be 30 minus 2x, and my width is going to be 20 minus 2x. So these are all secondary equations that I'm going to use into my primary equation to rewrite the primary equation into one variable. So now I'm going to rewrite the primary equation in one variable and simplify if necessary. So instead of having me to eventually have to use the product rule, I can go ahead and distribute through and simplify. So now I have my volume in terms of one variable x. Now in step five, you do need to determine the domain in relation to the problem. So the value of x, which is representing a distance length, has to be greater than zero. And the length also has to be greater than zero. And so does the width. So that means, as I am simplifying this, x has to be less than 15, and x has to be less than 10. So that means that the domain is anywhere from 0 to 10. We can't have x values between 10 and 15, because then the, then the width would not work. So it must be only x values that work for both. So now I'm going to find my critical numbers and endpoints, if necessary, of the primary equation. <clears throat> so what I'm doing when I'm optimizing is I'm basically finding the absolute extrema. So I'm going to take my primary equation. I'm going to find the derivative, set it equal to 0. And if necessary, if it does not exist anywhere, I would also have to find the critical numbers where it does not exist, but we have a polynomial, so that does not matter. I can factor out a four and 
use the lovely quadratic formula to find x. So x gives me 3.9238, or x equals 12.7429. Now, since this is not in my domain, I am not going to include it. Now, use either the first or second derivative test to determine which value gives you what you are optimizing for. So what I'm trying to do is to see, is this x value going to give me a maximum volume? So I'm going to do the second derivative test because I have a polynomial that's easy to find the second derivative and plug in the x value into the second derivative, and I get a value that is less than zero, which tells me that it is going to produce a maximum. And then answer the problem that is being asked using the optimum value. So I'm gonna find my maximum value by plugging in this x value, and of course making sure, since you're using your calculator, that you store this value in um, your calculator. Don't just use the rounded value. And so you should get a maximum volume of 1056.3059 inches cubed. All right, let's do some examples. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can do this example on your own? All right, let's see how you did. If a farmer has a hundred feet of fence and wants to make a rectangular pig pen, one side of which is along the barn, what dimensions should be used in order to maximize the area of the pen? So I'm going to draw my lovely little barn picture. And I have the length and width of the barn represented by X and Y. <clears throat> so my primary equation which is going to give me my area, which is x times y. My secondary equation is going to be uh, my perimeter. So I have 2x plus only 1y, because I don't have to fence the barn side. It has to equal 100. And for purposes of um, substituting back into the primary equation, it's going to make more sense for me to solve for y. I'm going to find my domain. And in this case, both x and y have to be greater than zero since they can't be negative. Now I can rewrite my area in terms of x, distribute, find my derivative, find my critical values, so when the derivative equals zero, so x equals 25. Now I wanna to check to see if this maximizes the area, so that means I'm gonna do the second derivative test when I take the second derivative, I get negative four, which is a negative value. So I know that x equals 25 is a maximum. <clears throat> and of course, I need to find the other dimension, which when I plug in 25 in for y, I get 50. So the dimensions of the pig pen should be 25 feet by 50 feet in order to maximize the area given only 100 feet worth of fence. All right, <clears throat> let's try this one. What is the shortest distance from 2 comma 0 to the function f of x equals x squared? So if we were to draw a picture, so we have our parabola x squared, and we want to know what is the shortest distance from this point to this graph. So I want to find this distance to some other point on my graph x comma y. So my primary equation is going to be the distance formula. How many of you guys remember the distance formula? Or in other words, it's basically the Pythagorean theorem, if you want to think about it that way. <clears throat> so there's my primary equation. My secondary equation is, of course, that y equals x squared. That's the y value on the graph that I'm going to. The domain can be all real numbers because my parabola um, exists in all real numbers and the y value is x is greater than or equal to zero because that's the range of my parabola. So now I'm going to rewrite my primary equation all in terms of x. So I plugged in x squared where y was. I can simplify this a little bit. So I expanded out. I'm going to have to go ahead and use the chain rule to take the derivative 
So the derivative of the inside gives me 4x cubed plus 2x minus 4. And then the outside is the square root function. So 1 over 2 square root of the whatever is the inside. And I can simplify this a little bit. So I basically pulled out a 2 and canceled it with this 2 down here. Now I need to find where this derivative equals 0 and where this derivative does not exist, which is when the denominator equals 0. So I just used my calculator to find that um, it will equal 0 when x equals 0.8351. And this will be an imaginary number, so I do not have to worry about this. So now what I'm doing is I now have to check to see if I have a minimum, because that's what I want, shortest distance. And I am not using, notice how I set up test intervals, I am not using the second derivative test because I do not want to take the second derivative of this equ equation. <clears throat> so I set up my test intervals. I'm going to pick x values between each interval and plug it into my first derivative looking for the signs. When I do that, in the first interval I get a negative first derivative and then a positive first derivative. So this does tell me I do have a minimum at this x value. So I can say that x equals 0.8351 is a minimum because, oops, too many becauses, <laughs> d prime changes from negative to positive. So that means that the shortest distance from the point 2 comma 0 to the parabola is going to be 1.3577. All right, let's try this one. Find two positive numbers whose product is 220 and whose sum is as small as possible. So my primary equation is going to be the sum because that's what I'm trying to um, minimize. So two positive numbers, x plus y, has to equal some sum. The secondary equation is going to be their product equals 220. The, <clears throat> and for purpose of substituting, I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. And the domain has to be um, positive because it tells you that they are positive numbers. Alright, so I'm going to substitute in what y equals, so I have one variable, and I can bring x up using negative exponents before I take the derivative, so I don't have to use the quotient rule. Take the derivative, <clears throat> simplify that a little bit, so I found a common denominator, and I can go ahead and find where the derivative equals 0, which is going to be at x equals uh, the square root of 220. And I would not use the negative because my domain has to be positive. The reason why I did not worry about um, x equals 0, because the domain has to be greater than 0. So I don't even need to worry about it. So I'm going to use the second derivative test to see if this value gives me a minimum, which means that when I plug this value into the second derivative, I need a positive value. When I do that, I do get a positive value. So this tells me that this x value is a minimum. So now to find the y value, I plug this x value in to get the following y value. So that means the two positive numbers is the same number twice. All right, how about this problem? A right circular cylinder is inscribed in a cone with a height h and a base radius r. Find the largest possible volume of such a cylinder. All right, so here's the picture of the uh, cylinder inscribed in a cone with the height of h and a radius of r. All right, so I want to maximize the volume of a cylinder. So in order to do that, I'm going to look at a cross section of my 3D shape. <clears throat> so I have the height of the cone and the radius of the cone. Well, I'm going to let the radius of the cylinder be x. So that means this distance is also x. 
And I'm going to let the distance from the top of the cylinder to the top of the cone to be y. So that means the distance, the height of the cylinder itself is going to be h minus y. So now when I write the volume of my cylinder, because the volume formula of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height, now I'm using x as the radius of my cylinder, so there's the radius squared, times the height of the cylinder, which is represented by h minus y. So for my secondary equation, I'm going to need more than one because I have three different variables in here. So I'm going to have to use similar triangles to help me find my secondary equation. So here is one similar triangle, and then we have this big one right here. So that means my secondary equation is y is 2x as h is 2r. And I can solve for y so that I get hx over r. My domain has to be all positive because I'm dealing with lengths and distances. And h and r are just constants, so just keep that in mind. They're not variables. The only variables are y and x. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my primary equation and I'm going to replace y with hx over r. I'm going to distribute through to help me take my derivative. Now I can go ahead and take my derivative. So when I do so, I get 2 pi hx, keep in mind, pi and h are constants, minus 3 pi hx squared all over r, keeping in mind that pi, h, and r are just constants. I'm going to do some simplifying, so I can pull out a pi hx. I'm going to set it equal to 0. So each factor equals zero, and I am going to solve for x. So I get x equals zero here, and for this one, I am going to get x equals two-thirds times r. So the maximum volume can't occur at x equals zero because it has to be um, greater than zero. So it must occur at x equals two r over three. So <clears throat> that means my max volume when I plug in 2r over 3 into my volume equation for x gives me the following. I'm going to do some simplifying, finding a common denominator. So I get 4 pi hr squared over 27. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to optimize problems. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.